All right. Hello, people. How are you? We're going to just wait a little bit to make sure uh, everybody gets online. I'd like to say uh, thank you for all the support. Uh, hey, Jenny, I see you. Uh, thank you for all the support that I've been, uh, I have received since doing all these shows. Uh, let's see. I see Alexis there. Cool. Uh, I don't know that other. Uh, there's Cynthia. Uh, a lot of people coming on. Hey, hello. Uh, Andre, hello. Let's see. Uh, Neil, a uh, lot of people. Okay, great. And I'll uh, wait. Uh, hey, Dave, how are you? Uh, Adrian, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Now, this uh, segment of uh, the No Boundaries show is going to be your questions. So I'm going to get up close here. Okay. Hey, Cynthia, how are you? Now, I've got my guitar ready. That's the exercise I showed last week of string skipping. Uh, it was really cool. I want to talk. Uh, hey, Sushant, how are you? Uh, it'd be uh, cool. Let's see. Uh, Roxanne is here. Ben, hey, how are you? Uh, Sean, uh, we're getting a lot of people online. We're going to wait a little bit longer. Hey, Diana, how are you? Uh, cool. I see you. Hello. Okay, Renee is here. Uh, a lot of people are coming online. Uh, want to know about string skipping. I did that last week. Hey, Gary. Uh, Alan. Okay, we're going to wait a little bit longer. Andy, how are you? Uh, Andrea Martingelli uh, from the great band Arthemis. He also plays with uh, Dave Ellison. Uh, from Megadeth, uh, he does a lot of things. So, uh, And he played on my latest album, More Machine Than Man, too. Did a great solo. Hey, Brad, how are you? Good to see you, too. And, and I'm getting really close. You can see my blue eyes. Okay, hey, Nick, what's going on? James. Yeah, Nick's a great friend. Uh, we've known each other a long time. Okay, we're getting good numbers. Hey, my cousin Donnie is uh, uh, online, too. Um, and... Uh, Hey, Tremaine, we're going to talk about you later today. Uh, okay, Diana, yes, the eyes are blue, tapping techniques. Okay, I, anyway, we're going to start now. Looks like enough people are, are online. We have a couple hundred. Hey, Andy, uh, yeah, surviving as best we can. No kidding, Ben. Okay, hey, Renee, how are you? Uh, thanks, love your eyes. Uh, well, they're blue. Okay, hey, John, how are you? Uh, let's see, some other people are coming on. Chris, so we have hundreds of people online now. Good. Okay, Remy, how are you? All right, let's start this. James, okay. A lot of what I talk about is technique, but a lot of what I, I like to refer to in my lessons are also the mindset and how you play. Let's see some other people. Speed kills, yeah. Now, um, yeah, David Ellison, yeah, he's cool. Uh, but, uh, yeah, a Andy uh, Martin Jelly is a great guitar player, really great. Uh, uh, he he uh, is one of the top people at MMI, uh, which is, which is a, a gigantic music school in Europe, and I played there many times. Uh, he lives uh, close to Verona, Italy, which is, you know, Romeo and Juliet, the little Coliseum. Hey, Austin, how are you? But, uh, anyway, we have a lot of people online. Okay. Hey, Bill. Bill Peck. All right. Uh, so... Now, um, let me see. Uh, also, I see Tanya online. Uh, Jay, Nolan, cool. Kyle. Okay, what? let's start with the questions. Who is your favorite band and guitar shredder? Now, I have a lot of bands that I like. One of my all-time favorite bands, I would have to say, is probably Dream Theater. I think my favorite shredder... Me, myself, and I. I've got three of them. And so uh, I like me, okay? Uh, my second favorite, uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, you know, I, I like a lot of young guitar players that are out now, but, you know, I, I grew up, you know, with, with the in the Al Miola school, and, you know, he's got to be one of my all-time favorites, Robert Fripp. Uh, you know, when it, as far as shredders, you know, Vinnie Moore's one of my favorites, Yngwie, uh, and then there's a lot of great... Uh, Younger guitar players out there, Angel Vivaldi, Andy James, uh, uh, the list goes on and on. And, and uh, but you know, I, I just really enjoy guitar. I love guitar. 
guitar is me. I am guitar. And so that's kind of how I look at it. Uh, you know, there's too many great artists to, to say I have a favorite, but I have many, many favorites. And, you know, I like music for different things. I like uh, technicians, you know, people that are just really excel on their instrument. Then I like other people that excel on their instrument that that do really great music. For example, Brad Paisley. Um, I like country music a lot. I love bluegrass. I like gypsy jazz. And, and so uh, Yosho, uh, one of the newer gypsy jazz players, I think is absolutely incredible. Okay, now um, let us, uh, yeah, Rick Graham, there you go. Uh, he's great, you know. Um, you know, what I, what I look for too, though, is, is something that is a little different than just playing charisma. And, and so I kind of look, you know, there's a reason that Steve Vai became famous. There's, kind of, there's a reason I'm known. Um, it's it's the playing, it's the presentation, and it's the charisma around it. And, and, and you know, uh, there's a lot of great players out there, but, you know, they, they, they look great on Instagram or social media. And then when you watch them on stage, you're like, You know, you kind of, you, you know, it, it, it's not so impressive. I, it, it's, you know, there's something missing as far as the, 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 to bring you in the connection to the audience, because, you know, there's a lot of great players out there. Uh, it's the connection that you bring with you, that you bring the people in, you know, it's kind of like, you know, hello, Cleveland, are you ready to rock? You know, I mean, what does that do? You know, it's just like, we ain't in Cleveland anyway. I'm in Chicago, you idiot. And so, you know, it's that connection that's either you've got it or you don't. I mean, there's a lot of great looking people out there, you know, that, that when they sing, it isn't that. And people are like, what? And so, you know, and then there's other people uh, that maybe aren't even as handsome, you know, guys or girls, but that just bring this connection that just makes you want to, that brings you in. And that's kind of what I look for in artists too. All right, let's get some questions. Are uh, you inspired? Okay, you're definitely at the top of the hill in my book. Thanks, Ben. Okay, um, yeah, I love doing this. Okay, Z somebody said Zappa is the most underrated of guitarists. Dave, I kind of have to disagree on this, and I'll tell you why. Um, while Frank Zappa's not, you know, known as a guitarist, what he is known as is a musical genius that pushed boundaries in every possible way. When I was a kid, when I was in high school, Frank Zappa was really popular. He could sell out 5,000 seed venues all day. And he, I mean, look at the song Smoke on the Water. You know, Frank Zappa and the Mothers. They even talk about Zappa. So, you know, he was extremely famous in his time. Now, whether he's an underrated guitar player, I, I love Frank Zappa's ideas as a guitarist. I never thought he was the greatest technical guitar player on the planet. So I don't know what you mean about underrated. I think Frank Zappa was extremely famous in his time. He was a musical genius. He is a musical genius. And, and his music speaks for itself. And so maybe if that, I don't know if that's underrated, possibly, you know, is he considered the great, one of the greatest guitar players? No, but I'm not sure. I think he loved to play guitar, but I'm not sure if he is one of the greatest guitars. I think he's one of the greatest composers and he's, and if sure he had charisma uh, and, he, and he had all the things that you needed to be a rock star. Okay, let's get some other questions here. Uh, I don't use that company, okay. N yeah, Nick Johnson, Johnston. Yeah, I'm familiar with him. I like him. You know, um, I think he's a really good player. Uh, uh, I, I think he's real good. You know, um, let's see who else. Uh, do you consider yourself as a great guitar player? Uh, yes, a and uh, I have ex I have confidence in my own ability, but I'm also know that I'm always a student and I can get better. So I think if you if you don't believe in yourself, if you look in the mirror and you say, I can't, oh, I can't do it, oh, I can't do it, oh, oh, you're not going to be able to do it. If you look in the mirror and say, I can, I think I can, I think I can, I know I can. If you believe that, 
then you believe it. You, you have to have faith. And, and this is not a religious thing. You have to have faith that you believe that you can do it. And, and I have a, a really good work ethic and I practice and I was born with ability. But see, if ability alone was everything, uh, I'll, you know, you people mention Rick Graham, then he'd be super famous right now. Uh, it's not just about being a great guitar. I've known about Rick Graham ever since the early 90s. Uh, but I, it, it's more than just being a really good guitar player. There's the extra something that you bring. I mean, Steve Vai's a really good guitar player, or, you know, great guitar player, but he brings that extra thing. Uh, and, and so, you know, I mean, Zach Wilde, he's a great guitar player, but he brings that something extra. And, and even Robert Fripp from King Crimson, he's an amazing guitarist, but he used to just sit down and, you know, I remember watching him in King Crimson. Except I think it's a G. Or, you know, riffs like... Ugh. I love that. Or like... I mean, that's some bad stuff. And, and so... But, you know, that's kind of what I look for. I look for uh, greatness in, in the playing. Or, you know, there's another thing that I look for, too. I listen to music as a musician uh, sometimes, but I also listen to music as just a listener. You know, sometimes, you know, this... You know, I found when I'm doing these live streams, I like to pop my head up. What's the secret of your playing? Popping my head. <laughs> yeah, I don't do that live. Live, I'm standing there going. You know, but it's just kind of funny. You know, because I'm kind of, I'm looking at myself here. The camera's reverse. But um, anyway, let's get to some questions. Were you able to make a box set uh, of DVDs? Um, you know, that, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, there's a lot of good people. You're asking me about a lot of great guitar players. Um, go to metalmethod.com, and you can buy, I have 13 instructional programs with them. You can get, it's not a box set because, I mean, they can sell you the DVDs, you can get them. But usually they're digital downloads, and yes, you can buy the whole MAB collection there, metalmethod.com. Now, I want to talk, uh, let's see, thoughts on Jason Becker. What can you say, you know? Um, I think I told that story about Jason Becker before, but I thought he was, you know, like a prodigy, and it's really a shame that ALS uh, robbed him of his body. Uh, literally, and, and uh, we did a benefit for Jason Becker uh, a long time ago where Eddie Van Halen was there, uh, Billy Sheehan, uh, Greg Howe, myself, Vinnie Moore, Zach Wild. I mean, it was just an incredible event, and I was in Chicago, and it's the first time uh, I had ever actually met Van Halen. You know, all the years of being a fan, you know, and here... <laughs> You know, I do a really cool Van Halen uh, medley, too. You can watch it on my YouTube page. But I remember, you know, Eddie looked at me, and, and after the show, he's like, Mike! I'm like, hey? And he goes, come here! And, and, and I'd never heard him speak. I'd never heard Van Halen talk. You only heard David Lee Roth. And, and I'm listening to him, and he's talking about Sammy Hager, and it's just me and him sitting by the monitor console, which is really just a big console, but it was the person that ran the monitors on the stage, not the main. And I'm listening to him, and I was like, hey, yeah, I can't talk like that. And I'm like, hey, la, la. And I'm like, I'm listening to him, and I'm thinking, I love you, Eddie. But he kind of sound like Daffy Duck, bro. It's like, I'm thinking in my head, like, 
Like, that's like a cartoon voice, bro. I mean, like, hey, hello, family, my boss, happy hanger. And I'm listening to this graspy, gravelly voice and kind of, and, and, and I love him. I still love him. I couldn't put the voice with the music or the face. I'm like, I'm hearing this. Ah, blah, blah, blah. I don't even remember everything that we said because uh, he was doing all the talking. I was just like, I'm nodding like, yes, yes, yes. And, and I remember at, at the end, uh, his assistant comes in and she's like, Edward, we have to go. And so Eddie gets up and he gives me a hug and gives me a kiss on the cheek. I'm like, it's EVH. It's okay. But uh, I, I love Van Halen, but I, I love Jason Becker, and I, I really admire the fact that he can still create and the language uh, that he uses, you know, w you know, even color-coding the guitar. Uh, I was on that show called That Metal Show with Eddie Trunk on VH1 the last year it was on, and the episode that I was on, there was a live feed to Jason Becker. So Eddie was talking to Jason during that show. It's pretty amazing. Okay. Uh, uh let's see what else yeah eddie smoked too much i guess maybe that's it okay uh yeah let's see now um have any famous players treated me poorly i don't know you know i, I don't think so you know I, I think a lot of times especially in this day and age uh, you know i think it's better to be nice than not nice and you know except with the old patrick swayze movie uh you know, be nice until it's time to not be nice. And sometimes it's time to not be nice. I can say this. I think that my stature and notoriety has has uh, allowed me to be on some tours that probably I wasn't asked. And, and I know this. I, I found this from the early days. When you get a guy that can go up on stage like this and do this, and play left hand or right hand and upside down. It's intimidating to a lot of guitar, other guitar players, famous ones. And so, um, you know, they may, they sometimes make excuses. Oh, well, you could, you know, we'd get you on this tour, but, but the way I look at it is, you know, I don't wait for my text messages to come in and I'm super, super busy. So I have no complaints whatsoever. Okay. Uh, yeah, Stanley Jordan, I think he's great. Let's uh, get some other questions in here. Okay, yeah, Stanley Jordan, I like him. You know, you know, a lot of people ask, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Yeah, the Roadhouse Band, they were great. Um, let's see, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting up close. You can see the blueness of his eyes. Okay, Ronnie Latecro. Yeah, do I like Buckethead? Yeah, you're, uh, I guess these are the questions I'm going to ask today. Uh, yes, I like them all. Even if I didn't like somebody, I'm not going to say it. Okay, so I, I don't I, I don't make my career out of slamming other people. You know, I don't make make my career out of politics or religion. I let you as the audience decide what you want to do. I'm here to be an artist, musician, and entertainer. That's what I do. Okay, uh is shredding very important? You know, I, I don't know if that might be a condescending remark or or just, you know, a question. But let me tell you this. Uh, virtually all of the shredders that were known in the 80s are still around doing great. So is that important? Yes. Uh, it is a style that is being fantastic technically and musically on your instrument. Shredder's a word. If you were called, if you were a great musician in the 1800s, the 19th century, and somebody called you a virtuoso, that would have been an insult. Because there's always, there are, throughout history, there's always critics that criticize the haves because they have not. It's that simple. I can't shred, man. I can't play fast. So I'm gonna cut you down because you play really fast. I mean, I said it in the original Speed Kills. You know, I've never heard anyone that can play fast say speed sucks, dude. They don't. You know, because I I have a saying: is it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Uh, all the young metal guitar players can, quote, shred, unquote. Uh, even Joe Bonamassa can, can shred. It is a style that's extremely technical, and it's been around for a long time with no signs of dying out. That's it. So I think it's amazing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, f so much fun to rock. Okay. Now, I want to talk about my signature guitar. This is called the STM24, and it's in 
Uh, it's white. It's like a flat white color. It comes with a top-of-the-line German-made Floyd Rose, and it's in the $450 price range. And it sounds amazing. I'm playing it through my Sawtooth 21. Too bad. I'm trying not to bob the head. I just like to do it on live stream. It's like getting into it, man. Getting into it. Yeah, I got the feel. Oh, I'm feeling it. Oh. Bob works. What do you think? In concert, if you see me going like this, it's like, I've been doing too many live streams. But in all seriousness, this guitar rules and it is shipping this month. I have another version of this. Now you can get an upgrade if you go to the Sawtooth website, which is sawtoothworld.com, and you see this in the $600 price range, that's an upgrade. They upgrade the components, but even on the on the on the initial one in the four hundred dollar price range, you get the top of the line bad boy German made Floyd Rose. There's no better trim on the market than this. Okay, now this one I'm particularly fond of. Uh, this is the it's called the STM twenty four ST, obviously for sawtooth, and again it's that flat black color, which I think just rules, you know, just, just mean looking. And I, I love, you know, the bevels on the back and, you know, it just looks cool. I, and this guitar does not have a locking trim. Uh, it comes stock. It's got, uh, you know, the sawtooth, uh, humbuckers on there, uh, maple neck. It is in the $250 price range. Now what I did is I, uh, tuned this up to concert pitch. I like, uh, different tunings on guitars. But I mean this guitar. I mean, listen at that guitar. $250 price range. It's just incredible. Great. And so they are shipping this month. Okay, now, um, yeah, I really like it. Uh, you know, I think Sawtooth makes great things, and they're, they're just a fantastic company. Okay, what kind of drive are you using when you shred? I am using the MAB Signature Overdrive. It's from a company called Tom's Line Engineering. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. It's a nano pedal, and, and uh, I have three signature pedals from Tom's Line Engineering. I have a, a delay that's amazing, a chorus. Uh, um, it's a mono chorus, not a stereo chorus, because it fits in a pedal board, and the overdrive. And, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the benchmark of overdrives is the TS-9. And, and uh, but I found that, you know, I had to buy a lot of those. I don't endorse that company. Uh, when I was touring, they kept breaking, literally. And I mean, I, I use big steel toe Harley boots and I'm tall. You know, I'm 185 centimeters, a little over six feet tall. And I stomp on them pedals like, no mercy, no mercy. Nah! That's the way I play. And, and I kept breaking them. I kept literally breaking the, the mechanism, you know, the on off. Uh, switch not not switch but the the piece and, and so um when i switch to tom's line it's the closest thing i have ever heard to my perfect overdrive sound and that thing it's got a little bar to stop you from breaking the rest of the pedal because these are little they're they're nano pedals they're very very small and man i've not broken one live i beat the heck out of it if anybody see me play live and they just sound amazing that's what i'm using now and see i like see because when i turn it down <laughs> You know, the sawtooth gets a really nice, you know, rock blues. And then when I want to kick it into metal.
then I can do it with the overdrive. And the overdrive has two settings on it. Uh, there's a regular setting and a kind of like a turbo thing where we kick some extra overdrive in. But that's a great question. Okay, uh, this uh, another question, Michael. What was? I'm sorry, I have to look closer. I can see good. You notice I'm not wearing glasses. But uh, uh, it is uh, okay. First concert, and then somebody says, "Is a sawtooth neck lighter than a Jackson?" This guitar is extremely light. Uh, it's a maple neck. See, it's not so much the neck that makes a guitar lighter, it's the body. And I mean, this is, uh, you know, Sawtooth uses some really cool different woods. A and that, uh, and, and it, it allows them to, A, not, you know, the, these trees are abundant, so it's not like chopping rainforest trees down. And some of this guitar is super, it's the lightest guitar, literally, I've ever strapped on my shoulder that I would consider a professional instrument. Uh, so to answer your question, is it lighter than a Jackson? Probably yes. A and uh, they also use medium jumbo frets, which are only uh, used by Sawtooth. A and these are a special fret that's between a jumbo and, and the thin, and they are just awesome. So if you're a shredder, quote unquote, you'll love it. And if you're a traditionalist, uh, you'll love it too because it's in between and they're just amazing. Okay, uh, somebody asked me what my first show was. The first show I ever did was actually a recital. I was uh, 12, I, okay, I was 10 years old. Oh, that's right. No, it wasn't a recital. It was fifth grade. Sorry, I forgot. Okay, I have a good memory for this stuff. I almost forgot. I was in fifth grade. Uh, I, it was a school called Ballard School in Niles, Illinois, very close to O'Hare where I grew up. And we played uh, in the talent show. And I also sang in the choir, too, when I was in grammar school. I mean, lift thine eyes, oh, lift thine eyes through the mountains. Dun, dun, dun. And then I used to even do like a e tra ho e tra ho I mean, I can go, shalom. I mean, I, do, I did all these songs, and I, I'm not Jewish. It's just uh, we learned all these songs the choir, uh, it was a, a woman named Miss Young, Mrs. Young. A and uh, there was no Ms. back then. It was either Miss or Mrs. Uh, but she was Mrs. Young, really nice. A and I had a, a tenor voice. I was a little kid, you know, and I had a super high voice. And, and I was powerful and not bad looking kid. A and uh, so, I, you know, I was in the choir. But I remember uh, when we had this talent show, we couldn't find a bass player. <laughs> Everybody's like, wait a second, you got six strings. I don't want four, I want six, just like you. I ain't gonna have less than you. And so we couldn't find, so we were, I was in fifth grade. I had uh, a guy named Dale Cosentino. He played guitar, he was pretty good, played rhythm. I was lead, of course. And then we couldn't find a bass player. So uh, I had one of my friends uh, that was really cool looking, that all the girls thought he was cute, uh, Kirk. And I, I had Kirk, uh, and he had this really wild haircut. He had bangs like this, but then like super short, kind of like a, uh, like a spiky punk hairdo from all the way in the back, except the bangs. They had this perfectly straight hair, and it looked red. But all the girls were like, oh, Kirk, oh, he's so cute, ah! And so I said, okay. And then our drummer was named Scott. And Scott was in sixth grade, so he thought we all sucked, and we were so young because we were only fifth graders. And so this was the band. And then we did the song. Now, I didn't use that kind of sound. I had a clean guitar sound back then. But anyway, and then what I did with Kirk, I said, okay, he's the good-looking guy. Kirk, I want you to be in the middle. And he's like, man, I can't really play. I don't know bass. I go, don't worry. We're going to just turn you up. Just look cool. So here you've got me, the musician. You've got, uh, you know, Dale, he's rocking. He's doing it. And Scott was a good drummer. Okay, so, you know, he could play. He could groove. You know, not that I was some expert back then. It was my first year of playing guitar. But I remember, and I stood on stage left, which is like audience like, if you're looking, it's your right, stage left. I put Kirk in the middle. I said, Kirk, just move, man. Just look cool, baby. Look cool. Yes, yes. And so Kirk's like, okay, I can do that. So we had, this, we had the cutie guy in the middle. I was on, on uh, stage left, your audience right. And I remember at the end of the song, this is my first show. 
I played it really good. I own that song. And I remember at the end, I just spontaneously put the guitar over my shoulder. So I was like, yeah, yeah. And I ended it. And then I walked off stage. And the whole school was there. And Mrs. Young gave us a great introduction. She's like, there's good rock and roll and there's bad rock and roll. This is good rock and roll. And so then I did the show. Here's the great part. I walk off stage. I'm depressed. I said, this is the worst show I've ever done. It's the only show I've ever done. And so I, I'm like, like my head is done. I'm like, oh, this sucks. I played so bad. And all of a sudden this girl named Kim, Kimberly, she's like, Michael. I'm like, yeah. But it, back then it was like, yeah. And she like, you're really good. Really? I like rock and roll. And so I had that. And then I end, end up, you know, here's me in fifth grade, another fifth grader, the cute girl. Her name is Kimberly. I don't want to say her last name, but it was Pappas. Kim Pappas. I just remember things. I have an outrageously good memory. And, and uh, for dates, years, all sorts of stuff. And, and uh, my songs. But anyway, so... That inspired me, and the over the neck, I found out that, not over the neck, behind my back, I found out that I just had a flamboyant uh, way of presenting myself when uh, I played on stage, and then I just show after show after show. Okay, yeah, Secret Agent Man, that's uh, Brian, yeah, you're right. But anyway, that's my first show, uh, and uh, my last show of this year, uh, this year, without COVID, I would have had a record number of shows. I, I played more in the last couple, in the first two months, January and February this year, almost than I've ever played in my entire life. It was so busy touring. Um, okay, let's see. What advice would you give my friend Neil Foreman? He wants to learn to shred. Uh, here's what I would give you. Um, you know, just remember that, uh, let's use the word shred because it has been around a long time. It is, it is filled with amazing players. So it's not going to die out. You know why? Shred is good. Good is always good. If shred sucked, shred would not be here. Sucks, sucks. And sucks goes away unless it sucks so bad that it's good. And so what, what I would recommend, now there's a lot of great players, there's a lot of great teachers, Get my Speed Kills program. Speed Kills works. The methodology is tried, true, and, and it's, it has withstood the test of time. Um, I show you every kind of technique you want to learn. You know, everything from, from alternate picking, economy picking, sweep picking, legato, uh, tapping, everything is in this. Metalmethod.com. If you want detailed a-list, superb quality instructional, uh, the visuals, the production, the content. Uh, my metal method programs are hard to beat. Uh, and, and now I'm not saying that other people don't have really great stuff. But if you want to learn and you want to get a foundation that starts from the absolute ground level and you build upward, you've got to get speed kills. Even if you're a more advanced player, Get speed kills because it's going to show you things that you probably have overlooked that I didn't and I help. I can help you. Uh, but speed kills, uh, metalmethod.com. Let's see. Um, what else? Uh, what if you become a YouTuber? I already am. And uh, my, uh, I highly recommend going to my YouTube page. Okay, so I've talked about Sawtooth. I've got a couple things uh, to talk about too. Now, as far as metal method... Uh, a few weeks ago, I talked about my jazz guitar lesson, and, and uh, it is really great because what it gives you is literally half a year's worth, if you do one a week, of, of all these different jazz chords. And so what you learn are the sounds of jazz to start with. And these are chords that are not easy. When you have, like, for example, a minor 11th chord, or you have an augmented 11th where it's, it's ugly. It's the COVID chord. Yes, and it won't go away. COVID. I want to write a death metal song called COVID. But then you add your thumb. You add your thumb. You wrap your thumb around. You know, I've done vegan death metal before. 
Rock. Oh. Lee. I think we need a COVID death metal song. COVID is dead to less than one hundredth of one percent of the entire world population. Anyway, enough of that stuff. I'm going to go crazy. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, I just think maybe COVID's making me crazy. Or I think it's made a lot of people crazy. It's time for that stuff to end. Okay, so, but, you know, I take care of myself. I still wear the mask. You know, when people see photos of me with masks on and they say, what are you wearing the mask, dude? Well, it's kind of the law right now. You go into a store, they say right on the front, you have to wear a mask. So, I mean, why, why should I break the law? What, what, what good does it do me to just to make a social statement? I just wear the mask. I mean, if that's right, you know, it's not going to kill anybody or it could kill somebody, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm here. I'm not a prognosticator. I'm not a, a political pundit. I'm not a religious pundit. I just wear it because... I'm, I'm told that to go in certain stores that I need to go in, that they require a mask. It's kind of like no shirt, no shoes, no service. You see in the United States, if you go in very, you know, with bare feet, you don't want to walk into a, to a grocery store, you know, with fresh fruit all over the place, you know, bacteria. So, you know, it's the same kind of thing to me. Uh, you know, I'm just adhering and following, you know, what people ask. Okay, now, we're going to do a couple really cool things. People have asked... This over and over, Sawtooth has a great artist roster. And one of the things that I really love about Sawtooth, they really are focusing on a few areas here. One, iconic players. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't mean to blow my own horn like this. They, I'm, I'm their main guitar in Dorsey. Rudy Sarzo, the, the legendary iconic bass player, is their main bassist uh, in Dorsey. Uh, now, they have other people, too. Sean McNabb. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. They have a lot of great people there. But, I mean, it's hard to beat Rudy Sarzo's career. He played with Ozzy. He played with Randy Rhodes. He was on the first album, heavy metal album, that went platinum. I mean, you know, Quiet Riot. I mean, the guy. And then, you know, he was in Whitesnake. I mean, you know, he was in three iconic bands. Quiet Riot, Ozzy. And then Whitesnake, I mean, you know, you're lucky if you get into one. He was in three. I mean, I think, you know, that deserves respect in itself. Plus, he's a great bass player. You know, he's still a fantastic and really great person. And then Vinnie Apice, uh, his first job professionally, John Lennon, not too bad. And uh, you know, he was the, the drummer in Dio, all the big hits, uh, you know. <laughs> I mean, all those big songs. Holy Diver! Uh, that was Vinnie Apice on drums. Also, uh, one of my favorite Black, Al Black Sabbath albums with uh, Neon Knights and Rise Out to Legions of the Brave with Ronnie James here. Just amazing record. And so that's Vinnie. So he's on drums. And then, oh, you know, people that know this are like, Michael, when are you going to play with these guys? Okay? You know, we know that you can do stuff. When are you going to play with these other two guys? I mean, like, you know, incredible. Well, guess what? We're doing just that. It's going to be me on guitar, Rudy Sarzo on bass, Vinny Apice on drums, and then we are doing uh, something really cool. Sawtooth and Chromacast, these are all companies that are part of uh, the same big conglomerate. It's Sawtooth Guitar, Sawtooth Amps, Sawtooth drums. They even have keyboards. They're amazing. And then they have Chromacast music products, which are, which are you know, my string dampener, guitar picks, guitar cables. They're one of the biggest uh, musical product companies on planet Earth. That's the second part of the company. But they have a third part, Go DPS Music. And that is the retail outlet that, you know, they just, they carry all of, you know, obviously their own products, but they also carry other brands and uh, that's how I met everybody. I did a guitar clinic there and I just love the people there and love the way they did business. But anyway, we're going, I'm going to be going to California in September. We're going to be filming uh, this. It's going to be me, Rudy Sarzo, Vinny Apice. That's, and then we have a, we have a singer that just got signed to uh, the Sawtooth family, you know, meaning Chromacast and everybody else. The band is called Liliac. 
They are super young. They have over half a million uh, fans on Facebook. They're a young up, up and coming band. The lead singer's only 18. The guitar player's the oldest one on the band, 21. And if I'm not mistaken, the keyboard player is 12. And they're all related. It's family. And, and uh, the singer, Melody, is 18 years old. I only met her once, you know, briefly at NAMM. She was with, her, with the group and with her dad. Her, her, their father is the manager of the band. And I just met them briefly at NAMM. So I, I don't really, I've talked to her for maybe 30 seconds. But what I do know is I, I've seen the videos and, and I've seen what Melody can do and what this band can do. She is a fantastic singer. She's like an old soul housed in an 18-year-old uh, life, human. And, and so Melody is going to be, from Liliac, going to be the vocalist with the, with the trifecta of metal. That's two plus two is metal four minus metal one. So I can't wait for this. And obviously we're going to be airing all this stuff. Now, also, too, I have a, a new Shred collab that we're going to be releasing soon. It's pretty amazing. Gus G., uh, that plays in Firewind. He's also played uh, with Ozzy Osbourne. He's one of the main guitar players. Bill Hudson. Uh, Bill Hudson was part of Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and he's got his own uh, band that's pretty, called North Tail. That's great. And then another guitar player that's in a fairly well-known band by the name of Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Jeff Schroeder, uh, the guitarist. He's been in Smashing Pumpkins a long time. He's going to be the third guitarist. I am the fourth. So our new Shred collab should be out, if not later this month, definitely in September. But the Shred collab is going to be amazing. I wrote a really cool uh, part to 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 uh, play the solos over, and everybody's that that part of it's finished, and everybody's got the solo section, and they're going to you know record it and film it, and then we put it all together. But Gus G, uh, Ozzy, and, and his band Firewind, uh, Bill Hudson, North Tail, Trans Siberian Orchestra, Jeff Schroeder, Smashing Pumpkins, and he's also got his own band, and he's involved in numerous things. He's another guest, and so it's going to be great. So let's see if there's any other questions. I hope um, to learn your secrets, but the show was canceled. Yeah, you know, I had oh, well over 60 U.S. shows canceled this year because of COVID. Believe me, I feel fantastic. And uh, it's not because I don't want to play. Uh, you know, it, it would really take a lot for me to cancel a show. Uh, I wanted to play, so hopefully next year. I do have a tour of Europe starting November 10th, and we are for five weeks, and it'll be with, with a band, and, and so hopefully I can do that. Uh, and I want to switch guitars back uh, to the white guy. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, well, I hope I'm answering some of your questions, but I cannot stress enough that... A lot of guitar playing is not talent. It isn't. If talent was the only criteria, we would have millions and millions of celebrities and, and big guitar stars, but we don't. There's something that separates the top. And, and you know, music is subjective, meaning it, it, what does it mean to you? So somebody could go, M.A.B. is the greatest guitar ever. Somebody could go, M.A.B. sucks. Somebody could go, he's average. You know, and so, and everywhere in between. And they can say it about me, about Steve Vai, you know, about Edward Van Halen, you know, about any young guitar player. It's just the way it goes because it's what does the music and the playing do for you. But I can tell you this, that uh, we are in a really great place in music. You know, a lot of great guitars out there. I think the youngest generation is probably the greatest generation I've ever heard play an instrument. And uh, there's nothing that's changed my mind. You know, if, if people say, oh, back in the old days, music had so much more feeling or it had this. My dad didn't even say that. And, and you're sure not going to hear me say that. I respect the time that things came out. But I realized that this is a new time. And Gene Simmons said, well, is that going to be like a new kiss? There's no new kisses or Metallicas. Well, that's true. There's no new Elvises or the Beatles either. Or there's no Iron Maidens. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Those bands live on just like a Frank Sinatra or an Elvis or the Beatles or Mozart or Beethoven. It's all a timeline 
of what humans find popular at any given moment in that timeline. And so we don't want another Metallica. We already have Metallica and we love Metallica. We don't need a new one. We need, so things are different. You know, I, I'm very fortunate, you know, because my career just keeps going and going, but nobody gives it to me. Nobody said, you know, hey, Michael, you're like so wonderful. We're just going to give you stuff. It doesn't work like that. You know, I work hard and, and I'm always, I'm always thinking of things and I, and I work hard at my craft and I love what I do and I have a great time. Who wouldn't have a great time, you know, being in music? And I genuinely love to help you and love to teach. So, um, you know, a few of the points that I made here, Sawtooth Guitars, they are shipping my signature line. We have a lot of cool signature guitars coming out, even a seven strings coming out. I've been shying away from playing a lot of my new album because a lot of it's on seven string. A lot of the leads are on six string, but I did the rhythms when I switched companies and a lot of the rhythms were already done. I have a bunch of seven strings. Um, I have a big guitar collection, you know, around 170 guitars, so we have a few seven strings in the collection. But I get my new sawtooth seven string coming and it's beautiful, it's awesome. So I'm gonna be doing playthroughs of the new record when I get that because I need it to, to play the riffs. Okay, so we talked about sawtooth, we talked about the, the uh, shred collab with Gus G and, and Jeff Schroeder from Smashing Pumpkins, Bill Hudson from North Tail and Trans Siberian Orchestra. We talked about the jam with me, Rudy Sarzo, Vinnie Apice, and Melody, the 18-year-old the female singer from the band Liliac. And then, uh, you know, I want to talk a little bit about my record. It's really great. Uh, Andy Martinjelli, that was on here earlier. I don't know if he's still on, but uh, he did a great guest solo. Victor Wooten, the five-time Grammy Award winner, uh, played a guest bass solo. And Chris Adler from uh, X, Lamb of God, and... Uh, uh, Megadeth, but I used to love Lamb of God stuff like that. I mean that it's just groove and stuff. And on my new album, More Machine Than Man, I really wanted to capture that groove, that a groove. And so I've got some really great songs on there and uh, I play it a little different. None of my solo albums, like if you put Planet Gemini to No Boundaries or Hands Without Shadows to Planet Gemini or Intermezzo to No Boundaries or More Machine Than Man to Lucid Intervals and Moments of Clarity Part 2, none of them sound alike. And, and I don't know if I get credit for that but I'm going to just say it right out. I don't play copies of myself. I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of writer that always looks for fresh ideas and I don't parody myself. And so when you listen to records, when you listen to More Machine Than Man, that's a completely different writing style than Intermezzo was. And Intermezzo was completely different than what I did in Hands Without Shadows, doing my medleys of songs. I'm not really mashups, but uh, I, I love to do medleys, and I've done this since I was a kid. I like to take a bunch of songs from an artist and string them together and arrange them in my own way. Okay, uh, let's get to some other questions here. Man of War, uh, yeah, I think they're cool. I don't know much about them, but yeah, I think they're cool. Uh, um, you know, I know they are, we are the gods of metal! You know, I know they're heavy. Uh, okay, now, one last thing here. We are going to be releasing a 21st century version of my song, No Boundaries. Now, it is a guitarist named Tremaine. And that's all I'm going to say for right now. We're releasing it next Monday. I talked about him last week. He took different versions of No Boundaries that I've done throughout the years and combined the hardest elements of them and what I think, like my studio version where I do all the tapping, uh, the Speed Kills version where I'm doing like Paul Gilbert style uh, string skipping arpeggios. And so, uh, and he put this all in the one devastatingly awesome version of No Boundaries. It's the greatest version of No Boundaries that I've, I've heard uh, since I recorded the originals. And, and, and then I gave him the backing track so we would have it. And he did something really great. He re recorded the backing track and added some pauses and did it his own way. Now here's the cool thing. You've got to go to my YouTube channel for this. Uh, and go to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of content online, uh, a lot of free lessons. All these live streams that you see here 
Uh, we, we put them on, on YouTube as well. We've got a lot of playthroughs on my YouTube channel. Just look under Michelangelo Badio. You're going to see my official channel. You know, I'm, I'm pretty active on there. And, and so, but anyway, this version of No Boundaries comes with Tremaine playing it on video, an audio track, the backing track that he did, and tab of the complete song. So I have the original No Boundaries uh, as an instructional program through Metal Method. So if you want the original, go to metalmethod.com. If you want to check out this new version, I hire, it's, we're going to uh, do a world premiere next Monday of, of this really incredible version. I'm proud that I was able to write this, that, that it, it still is relevant years later, and I'm really proud of the way Tremaine played this. He's, a, he's an excellent, a great guitarist, really cool dude. Yeah, and I just, you know, I like to help people. You know, I, I don't like to just help with lessons, but, you know, if I can it help in ways that go behind the scenes or help further somebody's career, I can't do it for everybody. You know, I don't. Uh, you know, I can only select a few, you know, the, the few that I can help. But, but I'm always thinking about, you know, not just what I can do for myself, but what I can do for you. How can I help you? And, and you know, it's been my mindset, you know, ever since I, w I was a kid, teaching guitar at the local music store. So anyway, I just want to preface this. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, now, could I play the riff for Time Traveler? Time Traveler starts... <laughs> And so, and it's all mixed meters. The reason I call it a time traveler is because it's time, it's traveling in different time signatures. There's mixed meters all over the place. Like... <laughs> and then the solo. <laughs> It's just so out there that I mean I just it's a really cool song and I did a playthrough on my uh, uh, YouTube channel and I'll probably do what I'm gonna start working on now my music is hard and, and uh, I don't tab out a lot because it, it, it's a uh, you know I know a lot of the younger guitar players they they write and then they have the tab ready and see I never did it like that because I came from a different school for example how hard is it for anybody to figure this out? So that's my melody in Rainforest. And so like... But see, then when I do the solo section... I just improvise, you know. I mean, and when, when I when I recorded the original No Boundaries track, I literally just one. I did one take. I just I you know I I had done so many shows. I recorded No Boundaries during touring. And, and I mean, I've toured so much in my life and, you know, I'm very grateful and I never take what I do for granted. But what happened was I, I was so on my game, I just recorded it. And, and so, you know, I didn't write it. it. You know, to me, a lot of solo sections, uh, sh you know, I have melodies. I have verse melodies and chorus melodies. I mean, like my song Intermezzo. <laughs> You know, and then I, I have in the, like. But it's with seven strings, so it's low. And I go like. So you have. So I have that underlying groove and over the top, just. And see, to me, it was just really melodic, like... And 
I just liked it. And so I have a different style. You know, I always think of a a melody, but you know, a lot of the the music that comes out now with younger shred guitar players, their melodies are are more are complex. So it's not maybe as memorable, but it tabs really good. And, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start. Uh, like, for example, uh, my original versions of songs, even with these improvised solos, some of them, I, if I kept it on the record, I really liked it. And, and so, you know, I'll, I'll be tabbing some of that out. Now, um, let's see, someone asked if I ever met Sean Lane. Uh, uh, yes, I did, and I jammed with him a long time ago. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, he passed away. Anyway, I just want to wrap everything up. And, and uh, with, uh, I want to say, the new Sawtooth Guitars are going to be in stock. The ST, uh, this is great. And uh, so all I can say is the M24 series. I have a seven string guitar coming out. I have some really innovative, cool things. Uh, at almost, I, I don't even know the exact number, but at least a half a dozen signature guitars or more are coming out soon. And we are bringing out a limited edition double guitar. We are making a limited run of a new sawtooth double guitar. So I'm actually, that's a, that was the prototype right there. I'm going, I have a brand new solo. I wish I would, I would have already been playing it. You'll hear it in Europe and, and you know, we'll do a playthrough on that. But once uh, the new guitars come in, those are going to be for sale. And so, I mean, sawtooth is a great company. Also be on the lookout. This is going to happen this year. Me on guitar, Vinnie Apice on drums, Rudy Sarzo on bass, and Melody, uh, the 18-year-old female singer from the band Liliac that signed to the Sawtooth family. Uh, also, get my stuff on Metal Method, the jazz progression, Speed Kills. They are fantastic lessons. Speed Kills Works. MetalMethod.com. Uh, also, my new album, More Machine Than Man, with Andy Martin Jelly that plays on Arthemis, also Dave Ellison's uh, solo band. Uh, he's a fantastic guitar player, a great, great person, a and uh, he's a brother. And uh, Victor Wooten and Chris Adler all played on More Machine Than Man. And then check out my YouTube page. And Monday on YouTube, we are going to debut Tremaine's incredible version of No Boundaries, complete with backing track and full tab of every single note he played. He took multiple versions of what I have recorded and filmed over the years and took like literally the hardest sections. In fact, I might have to do this version now. So, you know, it's kind of wild to hear my own stuff and I'm like, wow, you did a great job. But anyway, I just want to thank you, uh, all for for showing up consistently i'm going to keep doing this uh you know i want to help and and by you supporting what i do uh it allows me to continue doing this but thank you so much uh you know i've been given a, given a lot of gifts and, and i never take it for granted uh you know i've traveled all over this world i always say i've lived 10 lifetimes and it's true i and i'll tell you what i i don't do you know nobody's happy all the time but I have a very simple methodology. I have a very simple way of thinking sometimes, like if I'm just laying around. The best way to, to do something is start. Even if you don't exactly know the end result, start. Just start something. You know, if you're working on a song, you know, it's easy to watch Netflix or something. I, I hardly ever watch TV, and that's the truth. I, I watch movies, but I just... I don't have time for it. I'd rather work on a song. I'd rather practice ukulele. I'd rather do anything but just sit and waste my time. But I always, like when there's a new project and a daunting task, I just tell myself, start. Dive in it, man. It's like you want to learn how to swim? Jump in the water! So on that note, I'm Michelangelo Badio for Sawtooth Guitars. Sawtooth Tube Amps, Chromacast Music Products, and Go DPS the coolest music companies on planet Earth. See ya.